Look, die. All I'm saying is, you know, bleach is is good, but it could be better. And I think I know what it needs. Oh no. It needs more dance moments. Why? You heard me. We need to have a DDR competition set to Bleach. Just, just put Bleach OST on. Oh yeah, I can just imagine it now. People, t people DDRing it away to invasion. It'd be fucking awesome. But hey, we're back with Bleach Part Three: The Rescue, or the second half of the Soul Society arc, I guess. And we got lots to break down. I guess let's get right into this. You remember when we left off Die? Ichigo showed up, and he was about to fight Byaki a second time. Yuroichi then showed up, and because Yuroichi's a, a person now. Yes. Um, Rukia's there. Um, Ganju's severely injured, because Ganju's a bitch. Let's see, uh, Chad got his ass kicked last time by Shinsui, one of the captains. Yeah. It's a whole thing. But hey, at least Uryu and Orihime are fine for now, I guess. But yeah, and Ichigo is, I think, half dead at this point, because he just got done fighting Kenpachi, and he's like, No, I'm gonna go fight Miyakio now, because it's a smart thing to do. Yeah, no one ever said he was intelligent. <sighs> Except for the test scores, but what did they know? <laughs> oh yeah, and Squad 13 Captain Ukitaka is there too watching this unfold. And he's Liam O'Brien now, permanently. Probably because people realized, Kim Strauss, dude, your voice, it's, it's not fitting this guy. You're making him sound way too old and way too ill, I guess. I mean... That second part does fit, but yeah. And one of his subordinates went from being Michael Lindsay to Patrick Seitz. Which, which that honestly, change I I don't understand. I mean yeah, it fits Patrick Seitz better. It does. The character does. But it's still weird. That one makes no sense. Yeah, and we should probably bring this up now about these two characters. They're both the Squad 13 third seat. I'm going to bring up how stupid this gets later, but yeah, they're both the same position. I don't know how that works. They're both half the position. Also, does that mean they have Zanpak toes that are on par with someone like Ikaku's? I don't even- I didn't even see any Sonpok toes on them. People make fun of Squad 4, maybe they should go after Squad 13! No, seriously, we've been demonstrated that Soul Society are kind of pricks to each other, right? If they don't like their squad. Yet Squad 11 doesn't make fun of the squad with an ill captain who can't even, like, do much anymore. They don't have a lieutenant, we'll get to that in a bit. And their third seats from what we've seen don't even have Zon Pacto's. Like, you're not making fun of those guys? How are they even supposed to be competent at their job? And not to mention the third seats are just yes men. They pretty much there to talk about how great the captain is. You get, Literally. You get the Cindy Robinson do. one saying she loves Uki Take. And then her being like, well, let's just say I respect you a lot. Yeah, that's it. <sighs> yeah. Don't worry, because Kim Strauss went from voicing Ukitake to voicing the Squad 13 Lieutenant, Kai and Shiba, instead. Makes it kind of stupid when you point that out, huh? He's been demoted. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll get to that in a bit. Because he doesn't have his own theme song. So Ichigo is able to see all Byakuya's movements of the Flash Step. But of course, he's still severely injured, so Yoruichi knocks him out a bit. She then makes a declaration to Byakuya before grabbing Ichigo and getting away. That in three days' time, she will make Ichigo strong enough to defeat him. 
Byakuya leaves Hanatro, Ganju, and Rukia alone because he's bored saying I'm not interested in them. I only want Ichigo. I want to fuck him. Well, not quite that, not quite in a Kampachi way. No one could, no one's that fight sexual. Yeah. And because Ukitake is another nice captain, I guess, he requests that Ganju be taken to the medical corps and Rukia be put back in her cell. That, that doesn't make him a nice guy, but he did say he was going to appeal to the Soul Society higher ups for her, I guess. I'm sure that's going to go really well. Yes, real well. In Soul Society. Good one, buddy. Yep. So, Ichigo wakes up and Yuroichi is like, Okay, I'm going to take you to the special training ground and, and teach you how to unlock the true power of your Zanpak Toe. And it's here we find out Zanpak Toe have two forms. The, the Shikai and then their Super Saiyan form, the Bankai. And I guess you also yeah. find out Yodoichi used to be the commander of Squad 2 or the Stealth Force or whatever. Is she was a Soul Reaper? Yes, thus making the the substitute arc even dumber. What do you mean? You know what I mean. Though to be honest, Certain if Yodoichi was a what? What happened? A certain Soul Reaper. Oh. Uh, How do you yeah. quirks and everything? You mean Saito. Yeah. Yeah. And if Yuroichi was this powerful, by the way, because yeah, she outruns Byakuya. She, like, her flash steps on par with his, his and she manages to get away. That means she could have helped him this whole time. While carrying Ichigo? Yeah, while carrying Ichigo. That means she could have helped this whole time, but she didn't. I guess you could chop it up to her being... Her best friend is Udahara, so, you know, troll and all. She was just being a dick. That, and they're a soul reaper, so they're all assholes, am I right? Well, to get Ichigo's Bankai, he must fight his own sword and use different Zangetsus to do it. Some of which are better designed than his big cleaver. Yeah, so Zangetsu comes out, or Richard Car if you want to be full-on person about it. Explaining yes, the that... the Joker himself. Exactly. Injustice 2? Not Injustice 2. That, that's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> MK11? Okay, Injustice 2 it is. <laughs> but... Yeah, and Ichigo must find the real Zangetsu amongst thousands of other Zangetsus and defeat him with it in order to achieve Bankai. Normally Bankai takes thousand years of training or something like that, but they're going to have to do it in three days, so this is the expedited method. Which, Yoroichi is like, this method has only succeeded for one person, and that was Udahara. Well, has he anyone else tested only... it? No, he's the no. only person that tested it. What? So you're saying it has a 100% success rate then? But that's... But she was making it sound like it was something to be worried about. Like, I don't know if you can do this. Only one person's ever succeeded. But only one person's ever tried it. Okay, so it's a 200% success rate. <laughs> well... Moving on, though, 43 to 45. These episodes are back to Uryu and Orihime, because they haven't done anything this arc yet, of consequence. Well, except Uryu taking on a Jabu, I guess. Might as well name him Jabu, am I right? Exactly. Jabu, indeed. Hey, they, they had the wherewithal to actually wear Soul Reaper disguises, and the fact that they're the only two to think of this, and it took them till just now to think of doing that. Yes. And the one who thought of it was Orihime? Oh. Oh, we're getting to this part. Yeah. And Orihime beat the shit out of two Soul Reapers to steal their clothes. Judo chopped them. She explains Tatsuki taught her karate, but still. 
And then you that's got... gonna think, I'm not sure that's how it works. Yeah, and you have Udi, of course, saying a few scenes later, I don't want Orihime to be here for my major fight, because Orihime is too innocent. She would never hurt a fly. She just murdered those two sorry <laughs> birds. Or at least KO'd them, but still, I know that. I guess it's because it's a comedic scene. It's not meant to be taken seriously. Uh, they were just members of Squad 12. Yeah, so. They steal Squad 12 uniforms, but interact with a guy from Squad 11 and fuck up by saying, Yeah, we're from Squad 11. And even though this man is drunk, he's able to pick up on it. And hey, it's J.B. Blanc voicing this guy again. Go ahead. Yeah. Enrico! <laughs> Everyone just calls him Maki Maki. You'll know why later. So, yeah. Squad 12 people then show up to, to try straightening things out for Uryu and Orihime. And it's here we realize that the, the California dubisms are in full swing since two people in this group are both voiced by Vic, damn it, why? No, it, yeah, you forgot the better part. He talks to himself. <laughs> yeah, but I can't stay mad at him. Besides, we got way maybe, more... Maybe, maybe he, they were right. He is insane. <laughs> Yeah, so the Uryu and Orihime don't follow, think it's something suspicious. And that's when those Squad 12 people blow up. They get set on fire. They set up us to the bomb. By Mayuri, the Squad 12 captain. Now we can finally talk about this dick. We didn't mention him last time because all he did of consequence was threaten to torture Ikaku if he didn't mention anything about the Ryoka or intruders. And get angry because his lieutenant wasn't following him closely enough or something. He's kind of a dick. Kind of. But hey, he's also voiced by Terrence Stone, or Yudoichi's cat form. And now we can bring up some of the roles he's voiced, since this character sticks around way more than the cat does. And, and no, we do mean that. Yuroichi's cat form they're... kind of fucks off after this arc. Yeah, you might as well consider that they're the cat form dead. Except when they don't. But hey, he was Kojima in Showbits! A show I still haven't seen yet. For Shinomori and Kenshin. But his most notable role, his magnum opus of voice acting, he was in Bible Black, the New Testament. He just couldn't wait for that one. <laughs> you know me too well. The second I saw that under his list of roles... He knew he found something special. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uryu convinces Maki Maki to take Orihime and run after... Orihime's neglect... To, to leave Uryu alone. And Uryu gets ready to fight Mayuri. And Terrence Stone does a great job voicing the crazy ass scientist who over the top. I mean, didn't you say his laugh sounded a lot like Baby from GT? Yeah, yeah. even his deliveries. Y y tell me you do not get Baby <laughs> vibes from. I do. Well, he used to say that was revenge death <laughs> fifty thousand times. <laughs> no, he swapped that out with my my. Play that yeah. drinking game with him. Every time he says, Add my, my, take a shot. Okay, so, keeping track now. Are right, you ready to down eight, eight already, guys? He did say it like eight times during that fight. Speaking of which, now we get to see what his Zanpak Toe does. And, is that his Zanpak Toe like a pitchfork thing? I don't know what the fuck it is. Yeah. It's Shikai form. Something. Something like that. Well, anything it cuts, or if it cuts a person, it basically numbs all of the senses to the brain except pain receptors. Pretty much paralyzes you, but with but without the, without being numb to pain. Yep. 
And hey, his lieutenant's here too, or Nemu. Voiced by Megan Hollingshead again. You're already voiced in the Squad 10, Lieutenant. What, you trying to get Simo double pay? Talk that much anyway? I guess not. She's at least doing a different voice since Nemu is, you know, very monotone. Oh, monotone. So anyone could voice. <laughs> sure. And, yeah, Uryu gets cut by the Zonpakuto, because Nemu holds him there or something. Surprise hug out of nowhere. He should be happy. I'm sure lots of Nemu fanboys would love to be hugged by her. There are Nemu fanboys? I'm sure there are. But you find out why Yuri was the one who tortured Uyu's grandfather and killed him. Because he wanted to experiment on a Quincy. What a dick, am I right? And it's in the no, flash. No, 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 you got it. You back backwards. He tortured Quincy. He he's the one. He did stuff to, to what was left of his body after the Hollow had its away with it. That sounds dirty. Sure. Well, it's in the flashbacks you find out Udiu's grandfather was also David Lodge. Again. Which I'd say at least it's consistent, but I'm pretty sure in flashbacks in the future he changes voice actors again. I'm gonna get that a lot in Bleach, aren't we? Yeah. Why not? Well, Udiu removes this magic Quincy glove he had that makes his power grow exponentially. Maximum. Forcing Mayuri to go Bankai, giving us a first look at how Bankai works, and... Look, his Bankai thing is creepy as fuck. Look at it. It's a soulless baby head with... attached to a centipede. That thing's scary as shit! And I think it releases. I think it releases a poison mist, or something. Yeah, something like that. And Udiu's O penis is able to take it down, and I guess, but he was severely injured too. Yeah, since he was paralyzed, he has to use a Quincy ability that it is that ever it, used again. It might be, but yeah, he's basically manipulating himself like a puppet. Was it called Soul Thread or something? I think so. And Udiu's version of Flashed Up shown during this, the Hyoden Kyaku. Because every one gets one. And yes, they're all named differently to make them feel special, even if they're exactly the same. I guess the sound effects are different. Well, before Udiu can do the finishing blow to Mayuri, he turns into liquid and swims away. And now, since, since this fight's out of the way, I, 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 we should probably bring up the arm counter. Yep. See, for some reason, Kubo has a fetish when he wrote this manga of getting people's arms sliced off. So... Happens to my area twice in this one thing. fight. It's both- it's the same arm, each- both times. <laughs> yeah... Speaking of Mayuri, we gotta talk about his design, because when he does become solid again... Just look at him! The, like, there's no fucking way around it, he's fucking dark face! Is that supposed to be- they said it's supposed to be a skull, right? Yeah, something like that? I don't know. But yeah, may, when he may, may, it, uh, maybe it's just some chemicals and stuff too. I wouldn't be surprised. It is him. Yeah, it was first uh, it would seem like his actual appearance, but no, when he comes out of his liquid form later, he just looks like a normal dude. And for some reason, he just says he he, he scores all over his body as blue hair. Also, for for any also, Mayuri fits <laughs> because I'm, he's naked in the shot. I'm sure everyone wanted that. I mean, I've seen some people call him Yoshimitsu when he has all the paint on. Sure, it could be like that. <laughs> I mean, he... he uh, 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 I mean, he even attacked Uryu with a... 
thing on his helmet that was attached to it with flesh cords. Well, before Uriu it, could it, die from the poison, Nemu says because you didn't kill Mayuri because you only shot him in the stomach or chest instead of the head, I will give you the antidote for poison, Kuhn. Yeah. Of course, Uriu isn't in good shape regardless, because using or taking off that magic Quincy glove means he's no longer a Quincy. Yes. He, there, there's no Quincy's left at all. He's just a normal human. And that's when Tosin shows up. Except for the fact in his back flash, we, he, 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 we established his dad is still alive and it's an asshole, so I, I don't know we'll where get this more last his... Quincy thing ever came from. Well, because his dad rejected the Quincy heritage. Remember, he said there was no profit in it. Arrows can't make money. <laughs> yeah. More or less what he said. And even the, um, Sokin, or the grandfather, said, Well, what he says is true. I mean, you gotta make money to put food on the table, and being a Quincy doesn't really pay the bills. Only being a Soul Reaper does. Wait, why? Yeah, we're, we're vigilantes, man. I like Batman. Well, but yeah, Captain of Squad 9, Tosin, shows up. And now we could bring him up. He's voiced by David Rasner, who, um, I mean, he was in Final Fantasy The Spirit Within. Anyone remember that movie? Why do you do this to yourself? <laughs> What? Come on! Fine, he was Booth Slasher in Firm Goalie 2! The worst Firm Goalie movie! There was a best one? <laughs> <laughs> and a bunch of ad voices. But I mean, come on, do you need any more besides those two? It, 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 as it's all downhill after Bible Black, everyone. But yeah, so Tosin, he's a black blind dude. And that's actually kind of cool. Bleach was doing that whole thing before anyone else was. In fact, yeah. his Son Pak Toe actually goes with his thing too, which we'll get to in a bit. But what do you want? Yeah, his whole gimmick is going on about justice. Because justice is blind, guys, get it? It's subtle. Really subtle. So well, subtle, it hurts. Tosin uses his Zonpak Toe, which we don't really get to see what it does, and it knocks Udyu out, I guess. And he gets put in the jail. And I guess or he may get put up a fight at this point, anyways. And Ornahime with Maki Maki is taking a squad 11's barracks, which is where we find out Yachiru is the one who gave him the nickname Maki Maki, because of course she did. Because she can't remember anyone's name. Except Kenpachi and Ichigo's. Not even that, really. She gives everyone stupid nicknames, even those two. Yeah, but if you notice, those two are the only ones that are their real names, for the most part. Or at least close. close. enough. Yeah. Which I think it's because of how much Kinpachi respects Ichigo and wants to fuck him that she's like, Oh, I'll commit his name to memory then. No one else matters. At least part of his name. He each indeed. Yeah, and Kenpachi is willing to let Orihime off the hook because he feels that if he sticks with her, then he'll be able to fuck Ichigo again. I mean, fine. Yeah. That's what he meant. Honestly, guys. Speaking of which, we get more um, stuff with Squad 4 healing everyone, including Ganju. And Cam Clark is bitching about it. He has a diary, guys. He writes in it in public. I think he might have. 
What a pansy. Dear diary, today I fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> And then his inner thoughts slipped out, to, and he was saying them out loud. It's absolutely when... ridiculous. Why do I have to kill you, Dick Ryuka? Oh, and I guess Isame is here too, or the Squad 4 Lieutenant. Voiced by Stephanie Shea again. <sighs> Look, I get the recycled voices, guys, but do you have to make them recycled from a main character? Yeah, what's next? Is JYB get a voice of a lieutenant? Surprisingly, he doesn't, other than Ichigo and the Hollow. Maybe an ad voice? I think I heard at one point. I wasn't even 100% sure. Well, next set of episodes. And it's a flashback set of episodes focused on the lieutenants back at their academy. So Renji, Izuru, and Momo. You know, the ones that were all put in prison. Renji was put in prison because Byaki is a dick saying, you lost, bitch. And he's a ruined Momo because they're fight earlier. And... Um... Yeah! It's here you find out Renji's kind of shit at Kido. Yes, Kido. I don't care what Hitsugaya says. He calls it Kaido the first time that word is mentioned. Gotta get the Kido's. Kido basically being their techniques, like shooting energy blasted shit with her hands while chanting. Except fuck that, it's all about the swords. Except when it's not. To be honest, the only ones you really see use this a lot are the captains, cause, probably because they're the only ones that have mastered the whole thing of Kido. Uh, and I guess Shrukia to an extent? Well, she has no choice since her sorry for powers were diminishing. So his Pacto oh. wasn't working. Oh yeah, and we'll get to that. Yeah, so... Renji is shit at Kido, which I thought- I, Obviously I thought that was a funny scene in the classroom. With Patrick Sites being the teacher. Because of course. Where Izu goes up, lands a perfect bullseye on the target. And Renji's like, huh, I guess this guy's my big competition. I'll show him up. He blows himself up. And the people around him. Yeah, like half the classroom. <laughs> and the Patrick Sites guys like, Hey, you! Special lesson after class. <laughs> How special are we talking? <laughs> but Renzi gets payback, he beats the shit out of Izu during their sparring match. Cause he's mad about being shown up during class, I guess. He wants to be the best. But then they become bestest friends afterwards. Oh, I did later. And you find out Momo and Hitsugaya were best friends that grew up together. And Hitsugaya had no interest in wanting to become a Soul Reaper and kept getting mad at her every time she kept giving him progress reports on it. Because yeah, as we said, where Soul Reapers are assholes and anyone outside of Soul. Outside of the center of Soul Society, hate them. Yep. Then, yeah, they're sent on the, this class is then sent on a mission to fight Hollows or Demi Hollows. Which, what the fuck does that even mean? Couldn't they just send low class Hollows or something? No, they're not even real Hollows. They're 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 fake Hollows. Okay. They're artificial ho they were art artificial hollows. You mean until a real one shows up. But then Shuhei, he I, yeah, Shuhei Hisagi is the one that shows him there, or the uh, 69 man, Lieutenant Squad Nine dude, or Steve Staley again, because we didn't have enough of him. At least he doesn't interact with himself. I don't think. Good point, actually. I don't think they do either. I could be wrong on that. Then, then again, there's a re there. Then again, there are some ca lieutenants that get almost no screen time. We'll get to them. But yeah, at this point, they're like, he's a sixth year. They're already saying that he's going to become an officer of the 13 Core Guard Squad. But I love how easier it just goes, yeah. But he failed out of this academy twice before getting that role. I wonder how good of a position I'll get. 
About that. The exact same position, man. Except your squad. Except your squad ha will have issues. Both of theirs do actually, because he's exactly. the lieutenant of squad nine. Exactly. So yeah, on their exercise, real hollows show up for reals. And Renji, Momo, and hollows. Renji, Momo, and Izuru, who were grouped together, while the other did the other students all die, or did they, they get away? Off. Um, I know some of them were Patrick it, it, Sites. Yeah, I know one of them was Patrick Sites. One of, of the course, other, one of the uh, 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 one of the other six years died. I didn't both of them get off screen actually? Because they were even saying two no, six died years on... died. No, they on screen died. Okay. Because yeah, they're like two six years died. All that's left is Hisagi. And they stay behind to help, and then that's when Aizen, Captain of Squad Five, or Kyle Abear, shows up to help with his lieutenant Gini Chimaru. Yeah, Gini was the lieutenant back then. Chimaru. <laughs> <laughs> and they saved the hall uh saved them from the hollows. Yes, they saved the hollows. I hope that makes sense. Well, Momo escapes from her jail cell by using Kaido on the guard. Cause the guard, voiced by Wally Wingard again, was an idiot. Do you remember that scene, right? She's like, hey, could you look over here for a minute? He's like, what? What is it? <laughs> Actually, isn't it at this point that he, Wallace has been replaced? He's no longer the loudspeaker guy. Yeah, he's not. Actually, who is? I don't know. It, it was pretty much dropped anyways. Yeah. Renji has a heart to heart with his on Pacto, voiced by Vic Mignogna and Patrick Seitz, because it's two people. He's two guys now. <laughs> and Renji then says, You idiot, Zombie Mario, we don't need to fuck Ichigo anymore. There's someone else we need to fuck that's more important. Ourselves? Wait, Wyatt? Uh, uh, yes. So with his new resolve, he breaks out of prison. And Gein just lets Izuru out, claiming that he has an important task for him to do. Oh. Oh. Speaking of Momo oh. and why she broke out of prison, it's because she got a letter from Aizen post-death that Rangiku gave to her. And it said the one who killed him that was planning everything was Hitsugaya. Yeah, We're it's... going to bring up how stupid this is in a minute, and why Momo probably should not be a lieutenant. She probably shouldn't even be a seat. So, Hitsugaya seeing everyone break out, noticing that Izuru's cell is the only one that was open from the outside, puts two and two together and goes after Gein. And him and Gein are about to fuck. Which... Is when Momo shows up attacking him? It's a guy, I mean. What's and the difference? They both have white hair. How could you tell? Because one's taller. Oh, one's the tallest. But wait, he's not Wallace. Actually, he's the guy is the only one that carries his sword on his back, isn't he? Yeah. They all, they all did that in the academy. Yeah. Oh, it should be obvious, we're not in flashback land anymore. That ended after they got yeah. saved by Hollow Coon. Or from Hollow Coon. Yeah. 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 I mean, Mayori has his hanging it from the front of his belt. Well, that makes sense, since he's a scientist or whatever. I'm trying to go with the whole scientist motif with his tool belt. And he is no, a tool. No, I mean, like, literally in front of him. Uh. -huh. Well, the point we're getting at with Momo... Is she read Aizen's letter, and... That was totally not sus at all. Yeah, and it's just like, Hitsugaya, you murder, you monster! You grew up with Hitsugaya! It's implied he joined the Soul Society, Soul Reaper thing, because of you, you fucking idiot. You're not even gonna, like, get both sides of the argument. 
No, this is his handwriting. No one could ever forge Aizen's handwriting. Yeah, and even Hitsukai is like, what? what are you talking about? Fucking idiot. And... Pretty sure he use- doesn't he use Keto here to knock her out or whatever? Yeah... Gotta get the Keto. And now, Hitsugaya and Gein are about to fuck. Izuru is there too, but they both warn him, GTFO or you're probably gonna die. Which this is to showcase the pecking order of the difference between Lieutenant and Captain is, since Hitsugaya and Gein both released their Zanpak toes. Okay, yeah. so what's Hitsu guys do? I mean, it, it looks pretty much the, the same, except there's things running down it now to hold the water. And Cause ice. it's an ice sword. Yeah. Yori Maru. It shoots, and his favorite thing to do is shoot out ice dragons. That's so fucking cool, isn't it? And games yeah, is nice. yeah, isn't it just a dagger? It's just extends. Yeah, like building more muscles. Then TV. Well, game puts guy in a position where if he dodges his attack, then Momo will die because Momo's behind him or something. Oh, he launches he launches his attack, and there's no way he could possibly get to it. Well, that's when Rangiku shows up. Yeah. And Gein's out because Rangiku killed the mood, I guess. This whole yeah. thing with Gein. You find out Rangiku and Gein knew each other, and Gein's the one that recruited her into the Soul Society. Oh, what's that, man? And Rangiku keeps having inner monologue about not knowing what Gain is thinking and that tormenting her. I wonder yeah. if the shipper community is going to go crazy for that one. Oh, please. Uh, uh, They're talking about a community that grasps at straws for some things. But hey, it does show that either it was, um getting blown back by the spiritual pressure between the two captains during their fight. Yeah. And you get to hear Grant George with a hilarious scream. <laughs> okay. Next. So after that little thing, where Momo's knocked out, Izuru pretty sure fucks off with Gein. It's time for a Rukia-centric flashback episode, where she remembers her time at Squad 13 with Kai and Shiba. Or, as we already discussed earlier, Kim Strauss. And his wife Miyako Shiba, which I'm bringing this up because then no one noticed this when they were casting. It's just a coincidence. So, Miyako Shiba is also voiced by Cindy Robinson, who, if you all want to remember, voices Kukaku Shiba, Kayan's younger sister. You people realize that you made the man marry someone with the same voice as his sister, I'm just saying. It yeah, makes it look makes really sense. dumb. I mean, it is Soul Society. Anyway, he mentored Rukia, and long story short, there's a hollow monster that shows up that... What, doesn't it, like, hide inside people to possess them or something? It goes inside of people pos and possesses them. It went inside... his way out of them. Yeah, it went in way inside Kain's wife, Miyako, and kills a bunch of Squad 13 noobs. That's what you get for wearing a red shirt, you piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, look, I brought this up when we were watching this. So Kyan is, wants to fight the Hollow on his own because it killed his wife. Sure. But the Hollow destroys his Zanpak toe because, isn't it like some weird ability of the Hollow is where if it touches its yeah. tentacle or something? Yeah. And... I love how Uki Take is just sitting there in the background with Rukia, like, No, you can't interfere. This is a fight for his honor. He might live, 
But, do you think he'd ever get over himself? Sick the- Uki Taka, you're a fucking idiot! I'm sorry, I think, what? I think this is more of a Soul Society problem than an Uki Taka problem. Maybe, but still, because Ruki wanted to rush in and help, and... I, I know Kain was like, no, I must fight him on my own, even with my bare hands, so Kain's also kind of a dumbass. Yeah. It's like, dude, you've seen this hollow take out an entire squadron of your group, and he broke your Zonpok toe. I think it's time to admit, maybe I can't handle this on my own. But then it possesses Kayan, and... No one Ukitake and Ruki have to kill him. No, Ukitake has a coughing fit. So Rukia kills him. Yeah, because Ukitaki was sick. Or even he back kills then. himself because the way it is, he pretty much is jumping right onto her sword. I want to glomp it! It's so shiny! Well, yeah, and of course, as we saw before, heard before, Ganju saw that scene play out from the distance. Which is why he thinks Ruki is the one who killed him. Because context wasn't there for him, and Ganju's an idiot. Did we mention Ganju's also an idiot? It had to be said twice, I'm sorry. Yeah, you can tell why Rukia took a liking to Ichigo with how Kayan acted towards her, because he treated her normally instead of giving her special treatment for her lineage of being adopted into the Kutsuki house. I guess one thing we should mention is Renji was put in the special class while Rukia was put in the... Wasn't it the average class or whatever? Yeah. Despite him knowing nothing about the Kido. Yep. And Biakia not giving a shit when Rukia is like, I wasn't even named a seat on the 13th squad, which... Well, how? It's the 13th squad, man. We've established they're kind of shit. I'm sorry. Sorry, they just couldn't compete. Sorry, they weren't. <laughs> uh, they weren't enough of a yes man. <laughs> Dude, I love how Bianchi's like, "What seat did you get? I didn't earn one. I see." And that's it. Like, oh, so I could be out. Well, hey. Episode 50, Fillerland. Back to Karakuta Town with Don Kanonji and the rest of the dumbass brigade, I guess. And yeah. Cone is joining this time. Going on about uh. how Yuzu was torturing him by... D didn't Yuzu make him into a female stuffed lion? <laughs> like, didn't no, she make they... him dresses and shit? Yes. And she kept saying, I'm gonna get you a boyfriend, don't worry! <laughs> That's not like she Whoa! He kinda looks like... <laughs> it's just a stuffed day in a wall. Yeah. What do you know? You're right. Did she... Didn't she sell him to a couple of those stuffed animals, too? Yes. Cause he made a comment saying, I'm stitched in a threesome with stupid and stupid! <laughs> I'm sure he loved saying that line. Quentin Flynn is fucking great as Cone. It's one of those where I, I really wish Cone were in the show more of doing stupid shit like that. But you only get it in filler. And those post credit scenes that kind of continue this filler? Yeah, it's... Even they... though it's supposed to be a guide to Soul Reapers? I, I don't know. So yeah, at the end of each episode, there's the Soul Reaper guide, where it's supposed to tell you a snippet about a character, but then it just turns into continuations of this dumb shit. <laughs> but yeah, and Cone ends up ha um, escaping from the K Kurosaki house and getting a hollow to chase after him that wants to fuck him? Yeah. 
and the hall was also Cindy Robinson, by the way, because of, of course. Because we're going to reuse someone until we run it into the damn ground, and there's nothing you can do about it. Yep. Well, either way, Gene Tech, Yuzu, Karnin, and Don Kano and Gene Ududu all beat the hollow by... Don't they shoot Cohen into it or something? Yeah... Like a cannonball? He gets knocked back and forth between them. And he's used as an ultimate attack. Well, this episode was dumb, but at least it wasn't what the whole tone shift of a fucking cat getting run over, man. That was awful last time. It was an abandoned cat. No one cared about it. It lived in a construction yard. That was awful. Again, what to be the honest- the fuck are you even- Who the <laughs> fuck came up with that? What an asshole. Yeah, these episodes could have worked, like with Cone, Jinta, and Ududu or something, since they worked for Udahara fighting Hollows if they wanted to go the serious route. But no, they decided to go the stupid route. So I guess it still works, it gives a break from the seriousness of Soul Society. Except when it doesn't. Well, on to the next thing, I guess, since we're done with that. Renji had gone off to train with Ichigo, because he sensed his spiritual pressure. And he's the only one. Yes, really. Yeah... And Renji already tells Ichigo, I'm gonna train to get my Bankai too. Oh, also, Rukia's execution date changed. Now you only have, uh, one more day, instead of two. Oh. How unfortunate. So now Ichigo has to double time his training, and Renji um, already knows somewhat how to manifest his Bankai, but not fully go into it yet. Which I guess makes sense, since he's had way more training. So, I guess you could say it has three for three if he used the same method as Ichigo. What, did he? I mean, he was there. No, he went off on tra he was there, he just went off and trained on his own. Well, he goes off, and he's gonna find a Byakuya, and he's gonna fight him, damn it. Oh, Ichigo stays yeah. behind the train. Yeah. And, but now you get some amazing moment when Ichigo's in the healing hot spring. And Yuno Ichi does the whole offers to join him thing. Do you remember that, right? When he just goes, damn it, you just dropped your pants! What is wrong with you? And then she cucks him by turning into the cat. Which I hope you guys like the cat form, because I'm pretty certain this is literally the last scene it's in the rest of the anime. Yeah, but who likes cats anyways? We sit on a locker to get with them around in that filler. <laughs> Yeah, and it's here you find out that this training ground was made by Udahara and Yoroichi when they were younger, and I'm just thinking, how? How did you make this without anyone knowing? Oh, and Udahara was also a Soul Reaper too. He was the former captain of Squad 12. Because Soul Society... Look at how hard t of time they found- they it took them to find- to find four people or five people, or- Yeah, I guess it is five people. Unless you, unless you want to count her, but she was literally doing nothing, so... Yeah. Yeah, so... Udahara being the captain of Squad 12, they actually do foreshadow it with Mayuri constantly boasting that out. Do you not know who I am? I am the second generation commander of the Research and Development Squad. Which is Squad 12. So yeah, the first one was Udahara. How did Squad 12 go from being run by a troll, who, who was kind of a dick, but not an irredeemable monster, to Mayuri, who's kind of a cunt? He likes to experiment on everyone, including you. Yes, you. Now join Squad 12 today. He sacrificed his own men just to try getting Uryu and a hold of Uryu and Orihime. He even wanted to experiment on Orihime because of her unique abilities, which 
Yeah, I should mention that I don't think they show up again either. I could be wrong. You know her flowers that speak. Yeah. yeah. And and thus with the uh, and thus they died like that sixth year, who is the only other role by one of their abilities. Oh, you mean Dorothy Fine? Yep. I don't think she, yeah, know, she might you, show up in this again. I'm not sure, but I don't think she does. You, you used her as two bit people, but you reused all those other people to that extent. I, I don't understand your logic over there, guys. Oh, really and Tessa don't. has a new character quirk, too, since we're on this topic. Because it goes over to Udahara doing the whole sneezing thing, like, Pretty girl must be talking about me. <laughs> and Tessa yeah. has the quirk of, Well, I have some medicine! I mean, it's a unique formula, trust me, it'll work. And of course, it makes him even more sick. And then he's like, Oh, don't worry, I have another formula! <laughs> Damn it, Michael Storage. Being from this to Don Kanoji, he does a great job, to be honest. But yeah, so Renji goes off to fight Byakia on the day of Rukia's execution. And yeah, this is honestly a great character moment for Renji, even though it's pretty obvious he's about the job. Damn, yeah. Renji, you need a win, man. But now we can talk about Renji's Bonkai! So, what, is it just a bigger version of his own sword? Or what? No, it's a giant skull snake thing that he also rides on. Or I think that's later on. Oops. Well... So I mean, it's pretty much an extent. It, 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 he could pretty much a bigger extended version of his Bonkai at this point. Yeah. Like, uh, would get uh, with how he uses it during this fight. And yeah, he Biaki's like you'll never be able to make me even fall one knee, which he hits him with it and does. And. Because he's able to know Byakuya's moves with how much he studied him, Byakuya's Shikai has no effect on his Zanpakuto at all, or him. Because because it has joints in the middle, so them, so him trying to cut his Bonkai has no effect on it. Because his joints are ma maintained by spiritual energy or whatever. Um, yeah. Then Byakuya disrupts the Bonkai's rhythm with his own Keto. Or Kaido, if you're Hitsugaya. Because he explains that Bonkai has a rhythm that if it's disrupted will, yeah, kind of make it short out, I guess, or lose power. I if don't know if that's ever mentioned it. again. If you haven't trained enough with it, I guess. Yeah, that's never brought up again. Because at this, at this point, he had his Bonkai for like, five I minutes. Yeah, but yeah, how does that work for Ichigo's? Because it'd technically be the same thing. It would probably be even less. The, but, uh, then again, uh, then again <clears throat> Ichigo's is super basic. It's not like a big snake sword. We'll get to his later. Well, yeah, so Byakuya does the whole thing of, so you thought you won. Maybe you forgot, but I too got a Bankai. Yeah, kind of didn't think that through, Renji. And his Bonkai, <laughs> instead of his one sword breaking into a thousand tiny swords, it's a thousand swords that shatter into infinitely more. And... <laughs> I, I don't know. I actually love the design of his Bonkai when he does it. You know what I mean, with him standing between the rows of his swords. Yeah... Of course, later, they don't animate it anymore and they just make his swords out of CG. Can't wait till we get to that point. Yeah. CGI does what animators don't. Well, after being pierced with the Bankai, Renji declares that he swore an oath to himself that he must defeat Byakuya and be stronger than him. 
and attacks him one last time before getting staved again. He staved the boss in the heart. Exactly. But that's when Biakia does the whole thing of that time. Your fang did reach me, and it's implied he treated Renji's wounds? Because he finally respected Renji. Because Renji wakes up in an infirmary or something. Yeah, and Hanato, who's back with Squad 4 now, because they said, oh, there's an emergency going on, we'll punish you for aiding the Ryoko later, yo. Yeah, she's totally gonna get punished. Well, yeah, so Renji's back awake again in the infirmary later on, and... Liam O'Brien is there? And I don't mean Ukitake, I mean another Liam O'Brien saying, I joined Squad 6 because I looked up to you, Renji, you're so cool! So don't give up hope, man! See, Infinite thinks you're cool. Too bad no one thinks the same about him. But yeah, Hanatro explains that his wounds were already fully treated and everything, that someone did a great job dressing them and all that. So see, Biakia did notice him, Senpai. I can't believe this show actually has good character writing. What are we watching? Really? Well... Not Dragon Ball Super? Ooh. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, the execution is getting set up. Shinsui and Ukitake are scheming to find a way to interfere with it. With Nanao, or Shinsui's lieutenant being there, and... Both Squad 3 seats, I guess, or Squad 13. Meanwhile, Kenpachi lets everyone, all the Orihime and Uryu and them, out of their prison cells. Because he wants to fuck Ichigo again. Yeah. And he knows that they'll lead him straight to Ichigo. And we're off on the adventures of more non-direction. Yep, because Orihime so is on Kenpachi's shoulder and tries leading him, but then Yachiru gets mad and says, No, not that way! Listen to me! I guess no, Ikaku and, and Yumichika are there, too. Yeah. And... And the, Maki Maki. And Maki Maki. Or is his, or is his name... No, she changed it to Mr. Whiskers here, and even says, like, what? Yes. You can't remember my other... My, my name? But you gave it to me! I've been with this squad for ten years! <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, Yachiru gives Uryu the nickname Pencil, and Chad was Muscles. Was it Ganju Mustache? I think. No. I, I know she gave someone Mustache or whatever. Chad was Muscles and Uryu was Pencil, because Uryu even says, What, did, did I just get nicknamed Pencil? Yes. Yes, you did. I mean, you're no longer a Quincy anymore, anyways. It, forever. Yes. But yeah. You believe that, right? I'm sure everyone does. But hey, fight setup time! So, Kenpachi's group ends up running into Squad 9 Captain Tosin and Squad 7 Captain Kumamura. Who's wearing a basket on his head for some reason. And hey, Kumamura is voiced by Kim Strauss or Kayan. And to be honest, this is probably him at his best in this dub. He fits this role a lot better, I feel, than Ukitake. Would he him probably really fit as Ukitake voice. if he did a different voice, but that was too old manly for Ukitake. Well, their lieutenants are here too, so we get Shuhei Hisagi. And Tetsu Zaimon, voiced by Neil Kaplan again, like Bang Zoom or Studiopolis. Mm -hmm. Why? Shh. It makes sense if you don't think about it. Well, everyone runs off ahead but Kenpachi, Yumichika, and Ikaku, because they're the fight sexuals. Yeah. So, Yumichika fights Isagi, and Ikaku fights Tetsuzaimon, while Kenpachi sticks around to take on both captains at once. 
Except not really, because Toast is the only one that wants to fight him first. And Tosin may have stood a chance, but he, he unfortunately went up against Kenpachi. Well, now we can talk about Tosin's Zonpak Toe ability, since we can finally see it in action. Doesn't Ishika just shoot out little swords or something? No, it just makes a whole entire cell. No, that's his Bankai. It's a Shikai. Or so. Um... Yeah, because I remember even saying it just looked like it shot out tiny swords towards Kenpachi. Kenpachi a bitch, please. I guess. Well, his Bankai is honestly a unique ability. It makes a zone where it's pitch darkness, where all sight and sound are gone from you. No, because he's blind, so he's kind of got a dick ability. No, oh, you're blind. I am deaf. I was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he goes on this whole spiel about darkness is frightening. At least it is for people who are suddenly thrust into it, but since I've known darkness since birth, it doesn't affect me, because I'm a badass, you know? Do you know, with a line like that, you're, you're, just, you're just trying to sound like a fucking edgelord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately the weakness of this Bankai, though, is that when he stabs Kenpachi, Kid Pachi is able to grab a hold of him, so he's able to see and hear again and everything. Because the weakness is, if you hold the uh, hold the sword, then you control the sword. Yep, and since the sword is inside Kid Pachi, because he got stabbed with it, because Kid Pachi again, kind of, Pachi. Is, yeah, Tosin kind of gets fucked here. He would have stood a chance if he fought anyone else, but unfortunately, it was Kenpachi. Meanwhile, Yumichika and Isagi's fight. Yumichika, of course, being a fifth seat means Isagi being a lieutenant beat him. We don't even see Isagi's on Pakuto, do we? Or at least what it can do. Because I know he uses a Kasuri Gama to make all the weebs happy. Yeah. Well, we find out Yumitsuka's true, um, Zonpak Toe ability. Well... W w w w do we, though? Because it cuts... <laughs> kind of. So Yumitsuka explains, and this is what I was talking about earlier, that the reason that him and Ikaku are not the lieutenant is because Yachiru took that position. That his favorite number is three, but he can't be in that position because Ikaku's there. Then explain Squad 13, guys. That has two third seats. You could have just said it's different from Squad to Squad and fixed that little thing. I mean, it really is. I, I don't even think their, their position even matters, since do, do they even do any fighting? Like, I don't think all? so. They're literally there just to be his fucking cheerleaders. That's yeah, and he says he's not the fourth seat because he hates the number four. And that five is the number closest resembling to three. I guess? Well, if you look really closely and get drunk enough... Yeah, then I, I maybe... don't see it. Maybe the bottom curve, I guess? Maybe, maybe written in Japanese. Maybe... In Japanese, yeah, the kanji yeah. or whatever for it. Maybe, I don't fucking know. Well, he also explains one of the rules of Squad 11 is that Keto is for pussies, that they believe in all-out attacks. Which is why he doesn't reveal his Zanpakuto's true ability to anyone else. Because Ikaku Kenpachi would be mad at him. And then, he one-shots him off-screen. Yeah, when you come back, Hisagi admits, like, he drained all my spiritual energy. What the hell happened? And when Yumichika shows up again, he's all energetic and happy and... Yeah. It basically steals soul energy or whatever. Spirit energy? Same thing. Yeah. Yes. What's the difference? And Ikaku and Tetsuzaimon, meanwhile, instead of fighting, are getting drunk. Yeah, sure. Does make for a good joke. 
I don't even remember what Tetsu Zaimon's ability is. I don't think we ever see him fight either. Well, Kenpachi, um, for his part, of course, Tosin loses. And he's like, oh, I'm not fighting you anymore. It's boring. You've lost. You, you job to me. Which is when Komamura steps in and you find out underneath that basket, he's a doggy. I thought the furry community rejoiced. He's a cool doggy, though. I like him. And he goes straight into his Bankai, where we find out he has a fucking stand. Not just a stand. That thing's like the. F uh, that thing's a fucking giant. <laughs> like it's as tall as a fucking mountain, as we establish later on. That thing's an asshole in the Bleach Soul Resurrection game. I'm just putting it out there. You should just bait him, bitch. <laughs> but, yeah. So we'll get back to this later. Now, we got episode 55, when Ichai goes about to show up. Because he manages to get his Bankai right in the nick of time. When Rukia... Yeah. I guess first, before that, though, there was one last thing that happened in 54. Rukia is about to um, be put on the... What is it? The Sogyoku thing? Yeah, on the bridge to it. Yeah, and Ichimaru shows up, or Ichimaru. He's like, you want me to save you? Because I will. And she's like, really? No, I'm just fucking with you. Yeah, that checks out. I, I'm gonna be Foster honest. Kusama. Th th yeah, this, if you guys want more Doug Airholes being Ichimaru, go play the Blaze Blue games. He literally does this exact same shtick for Hazuma, and it is fucking amazing. Except turned up to even more, even more of a dick. Yeah. I don't think I would like Ichimaru nearly as much as a character if it was not for his performance as him, I'm not gonna lie. But, yeah, so he's a trolling prick. I mean, just listen to his interactions with those characters in Cross Battle. <laughs> <laughs> so, episode 55. And it's at this point I should mention this is actually the first episode of Bleach I ever saw. It's not even anything special either, it's just a build up episode. Yet, for some yeah. reason, I kept watching after this, which being as how this leads into the Ichigo Byakuya fight, I don't think I could have picked a better time to come into the series. Yeah. At the tail end of what people call the best arc in these <laughs> series. Oh man, the Ultra Swim back then was completely different than it was now. Yeah. It was you running Dragon Ball Z instead of Dragon Ball Super. Fuck, who remembers Adult Swim back in 08? Two episodes of Inuyasha, Shin Shan, Death Note, Bleach, and then Blood Plus. I remember that whole fucking lineup. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, I, Inuyasha, it was too late for me to fucking get into because I fell asleep during it half the <laughs> You bastard! But that's yeah. before we. That's before now when we stay up till like six a.m. every morning. I mean, hi. Fuck you, pop up. Okay. So Ichigo shows up, and the Sokyoku fires a giant laser on par with a million Zon Pakuto. Pretty sure this happened at the end of F fifty-four too. Yeah, and they're that's... kind of overblowing how powerful it is. Yeah, because Hichigo's able to deflect it. Like, okay, so literally any, so literally anyone on lieutenant or captain status could probably deflect it. Yeah, and then Ukitake and Shinsui show up and release some sort of, what is it, like a keto scroll thing? Something. That, that destroys the Sogyoku. Or holds it down. Yeah. Um, Ichigo's flying, too, because Yoruichi's cape from the Shihoin clan that she's from is able to give the ability to fly. And it's never used again. Probably because they can airwalk anyways later. 
Sorry. And yeah, this is what I was waiting for. So oh, you, Ichigo's you, showing you. up. Yes, Ichigo's showing up. He has to, he's promptly taken on by a couple of lieutenants. First the Stephanie Shea one, and then the Squad Two Lieutenant Mauricio or Mauricio. Yes. <laughs> Voiced by Lex Lang. Oh yes. There we go. You all might know him for his most famous role as Abilitus from Haunting Ground. Demento? Yeah. And that's all he's voiced. Right guys? <laughs> okay, fine. It's Ken Shiro from Fist of the North Star. I don't know. He was in that show. No one's ever heard of it. No one watches watched Megalobox, are you? Or he's Cortex and what? The Insane Trilogy and Crash Four? Actually, wasn't he him since Twin no. Sanity? Yes, I... Twin Sanity. Yeah. Maybe earlier. So he voices this guy who's a giant fat ass, and honestly, half his line deliveries I was laughing at because they sounded kind of like Birdie from Street Fighter. What am I gonna do? <laughs> and why is this guy in Squad Two the Stealth Force? When you look at this Nothing. fat ass, do you picture? Yes, this man is cutting Amazing and stealth. Amazing cutting and stealth. He'll fit in r quite nicely at, at, at the all you can eat buffet. <laughs> I've trained for years stealing from McDonald's in the all you can eat buffet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and his captain is Soy Phone, who we mentioned last time is Karen Strassman. Much like Momo, because of fucking course. And she's about to get her own thing, so don't worry. So Ichigo's able to punch him, the squad one lieutenant, who I don't even know the fucking name of, much less getting his voice actor. I don't even think that guy's even relevant. No. No, I, I don't even think they ever said his name. I, I don't think they did either. So yes, he, he, he one-shots three lieutenants without e even holding his sword. Yeah, he just punches them. He punched Which... through- he punched through Mr. Fatass's chic. <laughs> yeah, With his I... fucking fist. I get Isame, the squad four lieutenant, being as how they're the medical force, so maybe she's not used to fighting. But the other two? Like, damn, man. Yeah. So yeah, the episode continue, or episode 55 continues when Ichigo takes Rukia and tosses her down to Renji, who showed up just in time after waking up. Yeah. I guess his injuries weren't that bad if he was able to come back in, what, a couple of hours from when he got his ass nearly killed? I mean, he's still in bandages, so he's still injured. And... You get Michelle Ralph doing an amazing over-the-top scream when she was thrown by Ichigo. Oh, Rukia tossing. Should that I be wonder... a counter too? I, I, I kind of wonder if she had fun doing those. Oh, I'm sure it's fine. I mean, the only one we know that nearly passed out was Johnny and Bosch during the hollowfication in F-18. Yeah. Now he screams even more than he did in that, so he's like, in hindsight, I look like kind of a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Yamamoto, um, Chase, or the head captain, chases down Shunsui and Ukitake as they lead him away, realizing if they were to fight him there, everyone would probably die. Because it's subtle that they're probably the most powerful out of all the captains. Aww. And, so of course, Nanao followed them too, even though, yeah. Doesn't Yamamoto just look at her and it's enough to basically make her paralyzed? Even Shinsu's like, yeah, just get the hell out of here, yo. Something like that. Meanwhile, Soifone gets ready to fight Yuroichi. Since Yoroichi was the former captain of Squad 2, I'm sure you can guess who her protege was that she taught back in the day. Totally not Soyphone. 
Yeah, I told him that's for phone. Uh, of the phone clan. I shouldn't be laughing at that, but it just sounds so stupid when they say it like that, man. <laughs> You're the... <laughs> <laughs> the phone clan! She must be really phoning it in. So, and Ichigo gets ready to fight Byakuya. Like I said, this was just a setup episode, so I don't know why I can remember it word for word. But I guess so. Now let's see how these Whoa. fights go. Yamamoto releases his on top toe after stripping. And. Yeah. Is it just a fire's on top toe? Pretty much. Yeah, Uki action. Yeah, Uki Takes is just lightning. And the fuck the Shinsuis do. I mean, they. T and yeah, Uki Take and Shinsui both use two Zanpak Toe or twin swords. Which it's implied are the same Zanpak Toe, but because their spiritual pressure was so great, it made two swords for them or something. Yeah. I guess Uki Take being ill means he still has to be a badass in some way, right? Yeah. Just listen to his themes. <laughs> Damn it! No, we got way more Liam O'Briens to go. So they bicker about what is truth and what is justice, and that's when it goes back to Kipachi, and you find out Kumamura and Tosin ran away, because Yamamoto saw Tato's Ruiz! Oh shit, we gotta get out of here, yo! So Kipachi got cucked out of a top fight, and he's sad. Yeah. That's when Yumichika shows up and Kipachi's like, what the hell? You didn't get a scratch on you. In fact, you seem better than even before the fight. He's like, what? No, I just had so much fun! Yeah, it's fine. Well, that's with the other guy. And Ukitake and Tetsuzaimon start their fight because the loser has to run and go get more sake. And of course, dude, what the fuck is with Tetsuzaimon and Isagi both being like, huh, you're only a seat position. We're a lieutenant. That means we're better than you. Yeah, we got it. We got it. I think it's kind of funny, by the way, if you remember. Uh, and I'm sure all, you know the sad part is that it, all, all, all these people, all, all these lieutenants, are simply claiming that would probably jump to the shoulder. <laughs> oh, you mean Yatsudo? <laughs> yep. Probably. I mean, she made a comment saying, "Don't worry, I'll go on ahead. You guys could take on all the wimps. I'll take out the strong guys for you, because I want to see Ichi fight Kenny again." And, yeah, I think Ikaku even mentions that Tetsu Zaimon used to be in Squad 11, but had to be transferred out because of how much of a pussy he was. Which, that, I yeah. don't know, that just sounds fucking hilarious to me. Too much of a bitch to be in Squad 11. Must be weak as fuck, I mean, what? <laughs> well, now we got Yodoichi and Soyphone's fight. By the way, for those wondering how Yamamoto's fight is going to go on against two captains, you get cucked out of it. Yeah. off screen man. Dick tease. So find out, Soy Phone was from the Phone Clan. Well, Yoruichi's from one of the four great families, the Shioin Clan, which... Yeah, the four great families. Finally could bring them up. There's the Kuchiki household, the Shiba household, and the Shioin one. Do we ever find out what the fourth one is? I don't know. You've you've even caught up on the manga. Do they? I do we? I don't think they ever did. I don't remember that at all. So why not just call it the three grade families? And I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. Maybe because I'm misremembering four, something. Because four is a bigger number. Maybe it's the phone clan. Maybe they're the- no, they're a lesser household. That's why they worked for the Shihoing clan. Because they even said, we've been in service for generations, and Soy Phone fell in love. Yes, really. Well, we're not joking. But, 
And yes. Oh man, the, oh man, does she really? So, Yoroichi's like, yes, I promise I'll be here forever, alright? You can always protect me, and I'll train you, and we're gonna be, we're gonna, we're gonna be friends forever. And then Yoroichi fucks off. So, Soy Phone has abandoned issues. And train just so she could one day defeat Yoroichi. With love. With love. And we find out what her Zanpakuto does. Soyfun Zanpakuto makes butterflies on your skin when it cuts you. It's about the birds and the bees. So, yeah, if she stabs you in the same spot twice, you it auto-kills you. She has to basically strike the mark of where the bee was left, or butterfly, whatever the hell the thing is. It's a bee, isn't it? I think. It's pretty much, it's pretty much a base. Stinger gauntlet thing. <laughs> yeah, and her and Yodoichi fight at top speed with their fists and stuff, kind of looking like a DBZ fight, too, I guess. Yeah, one of the only fights without sound puck, well, with a kind of one, I guess. It's all you used to do the finger poke of do. I mean, sorry, what? <laughs> but it leads to a climax where Soyphone says, I'm gonna use a technique that I haven't even named yet. That's how new it is. And you're the like, what? I made up this technique, you fool. It's called Shunko. Got all of it. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid then... surprise face, Soyphone. Yep. <laughs> So they have a powwow and hug it out, and everything is okay. <laughs> and oh, I just gotta give Karen Strassman credit here. She had to go from one extreme to the other with Momo being Momo and Soy Phone. Useless. Yeah. And then Soy Phone. I mean, if you hear Karen Strassman enough, you can tell it's her doing both characters. But fortunately, I don't think they ever share screen time together. And one of them's Momo, so they're irrelevant. Well, now we got the main event, Ichigo and Byakuya's fight. Where Ichigo is demonstrating what his sword's ability is, shooting the Getsuka Tensho. Which... Your bill, you, yeah, I'm sure that's technique's gonna be made irrelevant. No, it's just command man wave. I was being. Oh, I, I, I could have tell though. It's gonna be totally irrelevant. Um, I just, let me be Akia pointed out going piercer of heaven, huh? What a pretentious name. Baby's not really wrong. So, Byakuya yeah. goes Bankai, fucks up Ichigo's shit, and so Ichigo's like- So the question is, who named these techniques? Them or their- uh, them or, or their Zanpak <laughs> I think it's the Zanpak Toes. Oh. Uh, so well, Sengetsu is an asshole. Remember there was one time in, in the last set when Ichigo calls it the Zangetsu? Man, he's really an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> the Zangetsu. But yeah, so Ichigo's getting his ass kicked because he's trying to take on Byakuya's Bankai Wanashikai. And then he just goes, yeah, I know Bankai too. And he screams for half the episode with a DBZ-style shonen power-up. And shakes the whole Soul Society. Because it warrants that, I guess. Yeah. And, and now it's Tensas on Getsu. Go ahead and make your joke. I know you want to make something about it being smaller or something. But it's literally just to block Katana from a big meat cleaver. Yeah, and Byakuya even makes a joke like, such a small sword can't be a Bankai, you're pissing on our tradition. But it just gives Ichigo super speed. Average speed. What? Never mind. It's gonna pay off, it's gonna pay off in the future. But just like Seiya and Saint Seiya, his ability was, you know, 
super speed. Can and it gives him new clothes. Yet? And it gives him new clothes too. Well, he puts Biakia on the ropes, which is when Biakia is forced to use the Senkei. Or, as Biakia would call it after this, immediately the Senkai. <sighs> Never change California dubisms. I mean, at least you can chalk these ones up to being early 2000s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the Senkai, Senkei thing, is basically where all the swords surround you and your opponent, where you forego all defense. So you're in a gladiator-like arena with swords watching you. And this is where something is brought up that I thought would be more relevant later, but never really is. Mm -hmm. So Ichigo starts losing to Byakuya, thinking Byakuya is getting faster, but no, Ichigo is getting slower because the weight of his Bankai is crushing his body, because he hasn't trained to master it at all, since he had his Bankai even less than Renji. Renji had it for like for like an hour. Ichigo had it for like a minute. Yeah. <laughs> but before Byakuya can do the killing blow, Hollow Ichigo possesses Ichigo, and you get Johnny and Bosch acting all crazy. Yeah. And calling Ichigo a complete amateur. Not bad for an amateur. If it wasn't for that stupid meme in Xenoverse 2 with Cooler, we would not be laughing at that word so much. <laughs> but, yeah, Hollow Ichigo manages to wreck Byakuya's shit. Since his fighting style is so erratic, Byakuya can't predict what he's gonna do. Yeah. But Ichigo manages, he manages to take back control from him, and him and Byakuya give each other one last charge. Yeah. With Byakuya promising, if you defeat me, I'll answer your question as to why I pursued Rukia so much, even though we're siblings. Which, didn't they just do like a final charge at each other with their swords and that's it? Yeah. They didn't even hit each other. It just breaks Byakuya's sword. I guess cuts his shoulder, kind of, maybe. Well, it's here we find out Byakuya's backstory. He was forced to be raised in a household where he must uphold the law and nothing but the law. But he also made a promise to his wife that he would go out and find her sister, because his wife's sister was Rukia. So, it's kind of stuck in a rock in a hard place with this whole execution order. Because he didn't know what the hell to do. Yeah. But Byakuya promises that he will never pursue Rukia any longer. Oh, and if anyone's wondering why he didn't just grab Rukia and run if, since he has super speed in his Bankai, Uryu actually does explain that by saying that Ichigo knows full well that they'll never stop pursuing her unless he breaks the law itself, basically. Ichigo even admits that by saying he wants to stop the uh, order of Rukia's execution, not kill any of the Soul Reapers or anything, that the law itself is his enemy. I see. <laughs> exactly. But okay. Finally, last group of episodes. But there's still a lot of exposition and plot twists to get through since we're leading into the next major arc. Or we would be if we weren't about to enter a filler arc. It's still a major arc, I guess. So, Itsugaya and Rangiku place a barrier around Momo to protect her while they head to Central 46. Basically what Soul Reapers must report to, the higher-ups, the Council of 46 idiots that gave the order to execute Rukia in the first place. Upon entering the place, though, they find out that everyone is dead. Even the bodies. 
Exactly. And I guess Izuru's there too. And Ron Giku chases after him. Which is when him and Rangiku are about to have a fight, and this is when the counter for Izuru starts that I couldn't wait to get to. So tell me, how does Wapisuke work? So Izuru's on Pakuto Wapisuke. Every time it cuts something, that weight of the when it cuts doubles. No, it just hits something, not even cuts. Yeah, so... Um, he whenever he hits Ron Giku's on Pakuto, each additional cut makes the weight double again and again. So it'll go from weighing, say, I don't know, 16 to 32 to 64 and onward. Unfortunately, he's fighting Ron Giku. Yeah. Actually, so he gets we... one shot it off screen. Did we see what Rizan Pakuto even does? No, not really. I don't even think it was explained afterwards either. Yeah, because he's just we like, your son Pakuto is 128 him. pounds, and she drops it and goes, well then I guess I'll have to fight you with my fists. Yeah, and then when they go back to that later, he's it, on the ground. Not in the crowd, he's inside of a fucking wall. Quite crater. still there. Oh. And I guess Momo was here too, because she followed Hitsugaya, because the barrier only protects her from the outside, not from her breaking out on the inside. Because I Hindsight. guess Hitsugaya. Hitsugaya, for being a young prodigy, probably should have realized, huh, maybe this person that's clearly mentally unstable, especially right now, I should probably find a way to restrain them in case they wake up and want to do something stupid again. Yeah. Speaking of something stupid, Ichimaru shows up telling Momo that there's someone who wants to meet her. Someone who wants to meet me? I love me! And it turns who out it was Aizen! Aizen was alive! <laughs> it's so great! Yeah... And Aizen's like, I had to pretend to be dead in order to do my investigation. And Momo hugs him, and then he goes, Momo, don't worry, I'm alive. <laughs> but you're not, haha, <laughs> and then he stabs her with a massive heel turn. I don't think he says haha. <laughs> no, but it would have been great if he did. Momo came down with a sudden case <laughs> of the stabs. Yep. Don't worry, she'll get used to it. Right when he two guys shows up, too. And, yeah, a lot of people actually do consider this a decent heel turn that did have build-up to it. Since yeah. you see Aizen scheming in the background on your second time through. Yeah, unfortun uh, unfortunately, later on, other things happen. You're getting ahead of yourself. But yeah, so Hitsugaya goes Bonkai to take on Aizen and Ichimaru. And isn't it, it, you said it's the Ice Dragon, didn't you? No, the Bonkai is the Ice Armor. Oh. Is that all it does? And just, what, make his ice attack stronger? I mean, we don't even get a good glimpse of it. It's essentially another one-shot, isn't it? Yeah. Don't even see much of it. You should know what his Bonkai does by now. Come on, man. Get real. And Aizen makes a comment saying, I love snow, but it's not the right season. Because I'm a dick. Yeah. I love not voicing an idiot right now. <laughs> yeah, Kai Weber does a great fucking job as Aizen. I'm just going to put that out there. Well, we find out Aizen's goal is to find Rukia. Which is when Tosin shows up in front of Renji, when Renji was running with her. And Ichimaru and Aizen are there. He throws a claw, a claw that... Renji, it's like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, and now... Oh yeah, and Anahana's there too. Or the Squad 4 
Captain, and we're about to get exposition from Aizen on how his Zanpakuto works. Long story short, it's he hypnotism. lied to them. You see, he lied to them. He said it was just illusions. Yeah. Like you were to, it's absolute hypnosis. Yep. So, he made everyone believe he was dead with his hypnotism. Well, it's not even that. They, they, they made a fake corpse and everything. Yeah, and Anahana was the only one who found out it was fake. They suspected it despite the hypnosis. Yeah, and everyone was under it. Because, of course, they were. And Ichimaru and Tosin are on Aizen's side because Tosin believes this is the path of justice. Justice is what now? It's blind, you silly turtle. It is. I don't know, doesn't sound very su- Alright, it's not supposed to be. And Ichigo shows up to help Renji take on Aizen, cause, you know, Ruki and all that. Yeah. And this is when Hitsuga- It's Hitsuga, I mean Renji, so he has an ability with his Zanpakuto that can stun Aizen for a moment? Did we even see what that was? What well, you see, a after his fight with Byakuya, his... His, his yeah. Song Pakuto is still broken, but he can still control the pieces of it. So it makes him fly up there and fly, then fly towards Aizen. Yeah, and then Aizen... And actually, this scene is one of the best uses of Ichigo's theme. Oh, yeah, because yeah. right when it's picking up getting into it, it just immediately cuts off when Aizen gives Ichigo the finger. <laughs> yeah, he nearly slices Ichigo in half with one finger. Well, not- well, he stops the blade with his finger. And he doesn't literally slice him in half with his finger. Yes, he does. <laughs> that would have been awesome. <laughs> He does have finger blades. That would yeah, have been it... awesome. Been like Wolverine. As far as someone doesn't have a Zog parked out that turns into claws like that. Well, maybe yeah. Maybe a filler character. So Ichigo and Renji obviously get their asses handed to them. Kumamura shows up, you know, the dog man and. He can't do much, with even with his sexy stand. And now we get the um, exposition on exactly what the hell was going on. The Aizen lol I win exposition. So Aizen, it turns out, killed all of Central 46 a while ago. And he was the one issuing the orders for Rukia's execution the whole time. But he made it seem like they were coming from Central 46, because again, mass hypnosis and all that. Then the orders just got more and more bizarre and people started suspecting something. Yeah, especially because the execution date kept being moved up. And they weren't letting anyone into Central 46. Like, oh, that's bizarre. Why aren't we allowed in here? Oh, that's weird. The defense systems are, all, are, are on. Despite, despite no alarm going off. Yeah. And we find out it's because Aizen's been dabbling in holification experiments. Yeah, those yeah. hollows that showed up during that exercise, the dem during the dummy hollows, that that was yeah. Aizen. You could probably chalk that it, it chalked the Grande showing up during the substitute arc to that to him as well. Yep. And that was when he had Izuru transferred to squad 3 for Gein, and Momo to his squad, but Renji was the one he knew would be the biggest problem, so he had Renji immediately transferred out. Because Renji's in love with Rukia, so he'd be hard to control or something, I don't know. He locks her. Speaking of Rukia, we find out Udahara in experimenting on this tune was the only one successful. 
by transforming hollows into soul reapers or soul reapers into hollows, vice versa. By creating an experiment known as the Hyogyoku. We also find out that Uhara is even more of a dick than you probably thought it. Yep, because he realized, oh shit, I can't destroy this thing, it's too powerful. I'll just hide it inside this rando person. Oh, yeah, her name's Rukia. I don't care, I'll just hide it inside of her. Yeah, it, it also prevent her from rejetting her Soul Reaper powers. No one will notice. Yep. Which is why Aizen pushed to have her executed, so that way when her body's destroyed, the Hyogyoku would be fine. But then he just extracts it from her anyways easily enough, so I don't know why he went through all that bullshit in hindsight. Probably to just buy time for what's about- what's, uh, for the other things to happen. Yeah, so... Uduhara's kind of a douche. And Aizen trying to do experiments, the one Kai and fought also was one of his experiments based on what he was saying. Because he said something about a Zon- or a hollow with ho uh, tentacles that could break Zonpak Toe. That was a failure experiment. Yeah... It just likes to eat a bite out of the person when it comes inside them. What? Bite? Uh oh, get your degenerate mind out of the gutter. Well then, Chad, Uryu, Ganju, and everyone else show up, because Anohana was able to use, um... Yeah, it was her lieutenant, right, Isame? Yeah, that was able to use communication to everyone, and tell them the whole story of Aizen's BS. Yeah, then people show up. Also, Aizen's the obvious... Oh yeah, Biakia shows up and takes, uh, stabbing. From Gideon, because I didn't need Ruki anymore after he got his orb. Yeah, Because it's always an orb. Oh hey, and Rangiku shows up to hold Gideon, and Gideon makes a comment saying, well, I don't mind this very much. Yeah, he, he's a Rangiku fan, good boy, I know. Stop, the shippers will get excited. We can't have that. Remember what they did? Well, either way, more and more people keep showing up. So, Aizen's forced to say, Alright, we're out. We're, 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 we're leaving, yo. We're going to Wake Mundo. They're getting beamed up. Yep, so Tosin, Gein, and Aizen will fly off into the sunset. They full fly off to the land of hollows and butterflies and magic unicorns and deserts. And now knowing that it was all Aizen's plan, we're finally on the wrap of this arc. Okay. So, Ichigo and all of them are absolved of their crimes because everyone was being manipulated by Aizen. See, soul society can be nice every now and again. Well, nice when they realize they're so so enough to, that it, that it hurts. Yeah, Renji forgives Biakia and offers to be in his squad still. Um, Kampachi tries to chase that, uh, look for Ichigo to have a fuck. Oh yeah, Ichigo and Ikaku, after getting medical treatment, are both about to spar with what wooden swords, right? Those practice swords. Yes. Then Kenpachi just shows up and chops Ichigo's in half. I said Ichigo spends the rest of his time there, running and hiding from Kenpachi, because he is, doesn't want to deal with that shit. And Uryu makes everyone new clothes, and according to Orihime, because he made Rukia a dress, that means he must be in love with her. And she made the comment saying, Man, I'm this young and already this intelligent. I must be really observant. Don't worry, Uryu, I got you. Did we mention she's a lot like Usagi from Sailor Moon? Yeah. A lot. I wonder how much more Uryu's whole crafting thing with clothing is going to come into play. Depends on how she... I mean, we are we already established it from the re very beginning of this arc too. When his cape rips and he brought a spare. 
Yeah, I just gotta wear a cape fetish, which I mean, can you blame them? Capes are badass. Capes are bitchin'. Right. Well, it's the, how he lives. He needs his edgelord cape. Oh, we also cut to Kukaku beating the hell out of Ganju, saying he did nothing during the second half of the fight, which isn't wrong. Notice we didn't comment on him doing anything this portion. Because <laughs> he really didn't. Yeah. And Rukia shows up apologizing for what happened with Kayan, and Kukaku and Ganju forgive her. Or Ganju was forced to. Yeah. Because he's too stupid. Also, Rukia makes her from mind to stay in Soul Society because it's where she belongs. Yup. Totally gonna stay there. Mm hmm. And. It's at this point, everyone's getting ready to head home. When Ukitake gives Ichigo a substitute Soul Reaper pass, meaning he can turn into a Soul Reaper at any time and fight on behalf of Soul Society. Man, I wonder, I wonder what the payoff to that's gonna be. Well, it should also be mentioned during those post credit scenes, Karakuta Town did get another Soul Reaper representing it. I don't even know that guy's name. And also, he's in canon episodes, meaning he's technically a canon character. He's a guy with except, an afro, it, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Except for the fact that the it's that the next arc is filler, but it's one of the fillers that's heavily referenced because it's the one that's n that's not the worst kind. We'll get to that though. So Ichigo and them head home and. They meet up with Udahara, who catches them in a weird thing to drop them off at places. Yeah. They're riding on a flying carpet thing. Mr. Popo's carpet, indeed. Well, you get another great dubbed scene by Michael Lindsay with Udahara talking to Ichigo. And, yeah... Him admitting basically everything Aizen said was true. That the main reason Udahara agreed to help go get Rukia back was to make sure the Hyogyoku didn't fall into the wrong hands or was discovered. Oh wait, he kind of made a fuck up by losing it anyways. Oops. Yeah. Ichigo said he's not mad anymore. Um, he's not mad, he's just disappointed. <laughs> <sighs> Everyone is friends again. As Ichigo is dropped off at his home and everyone else is... ...agreeing they'll meet up when trouble happens again. Oh, and Udi is saying, Ichigo, next time we meet, we're enemies, cause you're a Soul Reaper and I'm a Quincy. Lol. I thought that was a bit much on your part, Udi. Like, after all the shit you've been through, man, I know you're trying to be an edge ward or a loner, but come on, man. He lost his Quincy powers forever. He's never gonna get him back. That might have been the reason he said that to us, so they want to come seek him for help. Well, what about wraps up this arc? First, uh, we can talk about the ending and openings. How much did they spoil? Um. Uh, I mean, they didn't lie this time. Well, that's a plus. And at least we're finally done with happy people. I mean, Which really, were... they, really, for the most part, it was the Ichigo fight. Also, I still think the third opening's the best one. I don't care if you people want to call it blind nostalgia. <laughs> well... Yeah. This arc, um, does deserve all the hype it gets that everyone's heard of, I'm sure. This is exactly what you're supposed to do with something that you're inspired by. He took what worked in the Sanctuary arc from Saint Seiya and actually improved on it greatly. I mean, you could tell he borrowed a lot. Just look at the Sanctuary arc. I guess minor spoilers for Saint Seiya at this point. 
you know, one of the gold saints being a manipulative fuck trying to get everlasting power and take control of everything by manipulating all the other gold saints. Five people Except going forth to rescue someone that they hold important. Except he's a schizoid instead. Yeah, so... And not Except only that, but his, uh, his powers alone are hypnotism and creating illusions. Kubo's not even being subtle with where he got Aizen's whole thing from. Except they're only rescuing Rukia because Ichigo wants to, well, I guess. He's in, yeah, he's indebted to her, and all of them are... Because they don't really know her that much. Maybe a little bit for Orihime, which, yes guys, she literally did not get a fight. <laughs> Except, yeah. unless you count Jabo over there. I know he has a name. No, it's she knocked out two Soul Reapers with Judo Chop. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, this arc, the first 63 episodes of Bleach, which I can't believe we've killed that many already, are still fucking excellent and hold up really well. Obviously, there's some problems in fine-tuning you could pick out, but um, the good in the arc far outshines any flaws that are there. Yeah, and some problems that happen down the line due to, ri due to writing on the fly, but that happens with anything that tries that. Also, should be mentioned, Aizen leaves a great first impression as the next yeah. antag. Yeah, I, I mean that scene, that scene alone with Ichigo's theme, just getting cut out like that by the finger. <laughs> <laughs> he got fingered indeed. Oh, I, I thought I cut you in half. My mistake. Yeah. You're still, you're still attached a little bit down there. And the face and heel turns from everyone were really well handled, from Renji to Aizen becoming a dick. And how the arc was sending it up, making it look like, oh, Ichimaru's obviously going to be the main villain. He's the one doing all the scheming. But nope, wasn't him. He was just, I guess you could say, the, the bitch to Aizen. I mean, one could argue Tosin going um, with Aizen might have come a little out of nowhere with how little we knew about him. All you find out is that his wife, or someone close to him, died, so he wants to pursue justice in her memory or something. And Kumamura, the doggy, was his best friend because Tosin didn't judge him for his appearance since, well, Tosin's blind. I, I know it was just someone close to him. Was it his wife or anything? Uh. Or a friend? But hey, it's pretty obvious why um, Aizen manipulated Tosin and recruited him onto his side, since Tosin's literally the only person who's immune to his Zanpak toe. Be kind of fucked if um, Tosin decided to have a face turn at some point. And, yeah. I guess the last thing to mention real quick is the dub performances here were all on point. If I had to give an MVP, I'm gonna be honest, I'd probably give it to Doug Airholes' as Gein. Every scene he's in, he owns. And that has nothing to do with you be being a, a Blaze Blue Mark, either. <laughs> but yeah, Dan Warren also deserves special mention for Biakio with all the subtle nuances he gives him throughout this arc. Yeah... Igor did. Yeah, of course, we've got a lot of Michael McConaughey and Michael Lindsay throughout this arc, and Vix, all voicing one-off characters. And Yuri Lontholz. Oh yeah, Yuri Lontholz, both young Renji and young Byakuya. Can't forget that. Jeez. And young Enrico. Oh, and also, I think the speaker voice became Terrence Stone, if I remember right. So, yeah. It might have. Yeah, Mayuri became that, I guess. <laughs> maybe, his, you... maybe his liquid set form infected it. And purge swallows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
and other than a few script flubs with pronunciation like Kaido or Senkai. Which is forgivable with how mid to early 2000s this is. Well, this is 08 now, man. It's late 2000s or, now. Well, late 2000s. At least they fixed it, and to my knowledge, they don't do that again later on, but we'll find out. I honestly can't remember with how long it's been. Of course, next, though, Bleach would be catching up to the manga, so you all know what that means. It was bound to happen. Next is the Bound arc, which I remember liking. I, I hope I'm not wrong on this. I remember it feeling like it does drag on a bit, and judging from the length, I'm guessing I'm right. Let's see how long this is. Oh, 40 fuck, episodes. 46 episodes! Holy shit! Okay. <laughs> well, we're gonna see if we can knock out the first half of the Bound Arc next time. Well, yeah. I guess... We're gonna go play with dolls now. <laughs> <laughs> It'll all make sense later, trust us. But hey, thank you all for sitting through this, what, two plus hour thing? It's yeah. probably our longest video, period. A lot to break down. You wanted to make the whole Soul Society thing one long video. Five hour video, yeah, come on. It would have been legit. <laughs> well, hey, what is so what you thought of the Soul Society arc? And if you wanted to point out any dubisms that were silly or not, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, can't say ad voices when it comes to LA, even today. <laughs> uh, Bleach's final season's still gonna be really bad with that. Oh, no doubt. Just look at Persona. Well, thanks again for watching, guys, and. Hopefully y'all aren't enjoying these. I don't know. We'll see you next time with the arc that was bound to happen. Yep. It's about time. Wait, what? I think Goku just put in the chat that was the, the Issei clan is the fourth one or something? I don't know. I don't even know who that is. Look, I'll find out later. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, guys. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. Don't want this to drag on any damn longer. Have a bountiful day, everyone. Till next time.